Okay, endoscopic surgery. Uh, what all things you should know about and uh, regarding the handling of the instruments, regarding the uh, steering of your endoscope inside the nasal cavities and other operative sites. Uh, so uh, uh, I would uh, take you through um, some important principles, uh, which will. Uh, these are some important important tips which I I have learned from my teachers and while all the way doing the endoscopic surgery, uh, which have proved helpful to me. I hope you they will be helpful to you as well. So uh, to start with, no, there is no doubt about it that these endoscopic techniques are now the in thing and uh, will be the future of neurosurgery in the years to come. They are minimally invasive. You can uh, discharge your patients sometimes the same day and with minimal morbidities and uh, reducing the hospital stay and the associated costs. However, they, there is a steep learning curve for these things also like any other neuro, new surgical technique. This is also, you have to train your mind. You have to uh, have a visual spatial uh, training of your brain um, for learning and practicing these type of techniques. Uh, these techniques require special development of skills uh, which are unique to endoscopic surgery. Uh, because most of us, the neurosurgeons of our, my time, they've been trained using seeing microscope. Uh, but now more and more endoscopic uh, surgeries, uh, they have come up. Uh, the residents and the young practitioners, they, they are more and more, you know, they are in touch with, the, with these new technologies, so they are in a better position to learn these techniques very well. So this is the microscopic view which, which I was trained with, actually. Um, you can see the whole panoramic view of uh, the building uh, with a na this is a naked eye view of any distant object when you see with a microscope but this is how you see with an endoscope how beautifully it describes I mean I have stolen this slide from my from from one of the slides of my teacher professor from B.S. Sharma and I liked it so much I mean when you go inside the window and you look outside this is the view which you get through an endoscope so the vision is the beauty and you should learn to harness this technical uh, this uh, this this surgical equipment according to your uh, benefit. So starting with the theater arrangement of the endoscope, this is how it looks like. Uh, basically, uh, this is the operating surgeon here, and uh, this is the uh, assistant, uh, the second assistant. You, the operating surgeon and the uh, monitor is like that. It has to be in the same line of vision. Uh, because if it is like this, uh, from a different line of vision or this, the neck is strains, especially in long surgery, so it should be straight ahead of your line of vision. And the, 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 tray, the trolley should be over the patient and there sits the anesthetist. Also, there should be a monitor over the anesthetist so that he comes to know that what all the surgeon is doing. Of course, we do not want it more, most of the times, but uh, I mean, it's fair enough to them. So uh, this is how it goes, and uh, it should be uh, very good economically ergonomically I mean and the um, uh, OT should be there should be a lot of moving space in the OT and should not be cluttered so everybody knows that I mean there's no such rocket science in that uh, there are some special arrangements that you have to look forward uh, before you start with your endoscopic surgery so you have to see any loose connections I mean then there should be no loose rod with which you have y you will fit your endoscope attach your endoscope to there should not be any loose connections which might cause dangerous jerky movements, especially when your scope is inside the ventricular system, and it might damage uh, other important structures inside. So you should check this for the tightness of these screws and bolts. There should be no sharp angulations uh, like this, um, and it, it should be uh, uh, it should be uh, not uh, disturbed. The angulation should not disturb you mu very much, and it should be straight, simple. Uh, the angulations of the holder, I mean. Uh, you should check all the proper equipments in place, uh, such as sheath, biopsy, forceps, scissors, grasp, etc. They should be inspected before you start the case, before the patient is induced, for the, whether they are functioning properly or not. Scissor opening should be smooth. It should not open with a jerk. Sometimes what happens is uh, when, when you are using an instrument for quite long, uh, the in, the, something gets stuck up in between the blades of the scissors. So it does not open freely and it opens with a jug and uh, when it opens with a jug when you're inside a very small limited space there are potential uh, chances for you know damage to important structures similarly camera light source and image quality also should be checked uh, proper the instrument should be such that uh, they should fit down the working channel of the endoscope and you should check it before uh, avoid uh, cables like this coming in your way which might hinder your arm movement 
uh, they should not be like this they should be properly you know tied and uh, away from your hand movements and uh, cabling and the light cable and the uh, suctions and all they should be away and tied uh, in a plastic sheath or some, some, something like this uh, well if you're working in a closed space this type of angulated instruments should not preferred generally because there is not much of a space inside actually so this is the preferred single shaft insulated in a single shaft in instrument which is uh, more you know preferred in the endoscopic surgeries not like this now long and short telescope there are two types of telescopes which generally use especially in a spine surgery as well so the long, long telescope is good one because it gives you a room where you can use your uh, other instruments um, uh, in this space so this is a long telescope you can use how free the movement of your hands can become with the use of a long telescope which is not the case when you are using a short telescope so always prefer a long telescope when you are doing uh, the endoscopic surgeries well it's a very costly equipment i mean uh, you have to invest invest a fortune to buy these uh, surgical equipments so you have to learn to take proper care of these instruments as well uh, most of the uh, telescopes, especially in the novice hands, get injured by means of a drill. Uh, so always remember that you have to stop the drill first and then take it out. Uh, do not. Um, there is a reflex. Uh, if you if you if you don't uh, stop the drill and take it out, it might uh, you know touch the lens and spoil your uh, costly telescope. Uh, telescope while not in use should always be protected by the sheath and the drill is. Uh, uh, the telescope should not be lifted by holding it from the tip more so if, if it is without any protecting sheath and especially w when the camera is can also connected with that so you should uh, learn to take care and also train your uh, your ot staff how to handle the telescope i already said this is straight rather than bayonet shaped uh, instruments are preferred and it is a rounded rather than the flat instruments are preferred because the ergonomics of the instruments there is, is a lot of clutter inside there's no space actually so your effort should be like mag inserting maximum instruments in as little as a space as possible now this has to be the arrangement of the of the uh, uh, things which you insert inside the cavity operating cavity uh, uh, the telescope the camera uh, this should be they should not be in a straight line because difficult to visualize that they should be in a triangular arrangement one side camera one side instrument uh, so it's a good arrangement that and it's better that for visualization i mean now uh, in the, in the it, it's difficult if you insert both the instrument and the telescope simultaneously and there is one more disadvantage i tell you if you insert both the instrument and the telescope simultaneously then you're not able to visualize the instrument because there is an endoscopic blind spot also i'm coming in the future slides so uh, you have to learn to work your hands in a sink in a tandem manner with the hand uh, holding the instrument always advancing ahead of your endoscope so so that the instrument is always under your vision number one so number one advantage of this technique is that the instrument which you insert is always under your vision okay and the number two advantage is that if you if you advance your instrument ahead of an endoscope then there is less space which is you know required for these uh, arrangement of the instrument and the telescope so it should be like that uh, i mean the most important thing is that before you start surgery you should check the orientation and the position of the camera uh, always remember these buttons over here and these buttons over here they have to be uh, facing the uh, monitor they should be up away from the surgeon okay and you should check this arrangement of your uh, scope quite frequently during surgery and this is very very important especially if you are using a 30 degree or a higher degree telescope what happens is that um, uh, this uh, uh, angulation changes and when the angulation changes the entire anatomy gets distorted and you can confuse a ICA to a basilar artery so this can be very very catastrophic so always remember the camera head should be towards the monitor away from the surgeon always check it first at the start of surgery <coughs> and then quite frequently during the surgery uh, this is the way how uh, this telescope sheath should be uh, held by your hand uh, and in order if you're uh, in order to stabilize it and uh, it, it should be connected to the rod holder and also your fingers should be should rest on this uh, in order to hold that before starting the surgery do a white balancing um, so as to get a good feel of the colors and magnification i mean you can um, adjust it according to the, your uh, convenience higher magnification is required for zooming uh, especially uh, but it, this comes at the cost of a uh, field of vision if you zoom it more then the field of vision becomes much much narrower 
uh, again the instrument which you are uh, which you which you like is uh, it should be long slender and uh, it should be uh, the tip should be slightly curved to allow the better visualization while inside the endoscopic cavity now one more thing about the uh, grip the grip of the instrument which you use uh, during endoscopic surgery there are two three types of grip uh, uh, precisely one is the precision grip now the precision grip is the one where you would like to do things of precision dissection of precision i mean and these are always done by your lumbricals here the four fingers over here so uh, like as you see in this figure uh, if you are doing a uh, precision dissection then you have to use your fingers with this but some things when you especially when you're trying to break something uh, then of course you can't do this with your lumbricals they're not very strong muscles then you have to use your thumb muscles so then the power grip comes uh, like as uh, when you see in this figure is trying to take a biopsy or something then you uh, switch your grip from precision grip to the power grip now in some cases you require both of them so when you require both of them you insert your uh, you place your instrument to the desired target area by using a precision grip and then ask your assistant to to apply the power grip uh, while taking the biopsy so this is important i mean if you try to uh, to to in this figure if you if, if you try to you know to insert a small uh, a long instrument a biopsy instrument by using a power grip and try to take a biopsy this is a wrong method what you, what is the uh, uh, correct method is that you should direct your biopsy instrument towards the target area and then ask your assistant to you know to apply the power grip to take a biopsy so this is better as compared to the other method now the endoscopic blind area which i was talking about you to be very very wary of it you have to be you have to know you have to train your mind that um, never train your mind to you know to uh, to to work both the hands in a synchronized coordinated manner and the instrument hand has to always to go ahead and they should work like this like a belly dance you have seen a belly dance so like uh, the sink should go like this the endoscope and instrument and i would want that when you, or if you go down there and, uh, and doing hands on always try to practice inside the nasal cavity with this instrument uh, inside out inside out inside out and the faster you are able to do this the better you have you will train your mind using this and the beauty of endoscopic surgery is only the synchronization and the coordinated running of both of your hands simultaneously and your mind reading both the hands simultaneously so <coughs> <clears throat> the same thing which i was saying depicted in this figure do not insert your instruments without vision without vision don't insert now the site of the placement of your telescope the placement of your telescope the the burr the uh, this is very very important depends on what type of procedure you are doing now suppose if you are doing a etv then uh, it the correct trajectory is this 2 cm in front of the coronal suture and about to 2.5 centimeters from the midline now the wrong if there is an anterior trajectory there are chances that you might not land up in the uh, in the third ventricular floor properly number one number two there are chances that they you might injure the fornix here like this uh, in the anterior trajectory you you will not land up into the third ventricular floor floor the area of interest is here and in the posterior trajectory again there will be difficulty in reaching this so now sometimes you want when you are doing an etv you want to, to obtain a biopsy as well from the pineal region so um, generally uh, it's better if you take two bur holes i mean the anterior bur placed working anterior placed bur, bur hole for the uh, for the pineal biopsy and the posteriorly placed bur hole for the uh, endoscopic third ventricle ostomy howsoever you can do this with a single bur hole as well uh but then the bur hole should be a larger bur hole and then you can uh, you can uh, adjust your telescope accordingly uh, as per the and the second thing which you can do is that and there there should be an anteriorly placed working channel for the etv and the posteriorly placed working channel for obtaining a biopsy then you can do it in a single bur hole now uh, another thing which i want to tell you is that uh the, the wrong site of placement of the bur hole Uh, in the sagittal plane they it risk a fornix uh, for injury how we, uh, i show you uh, now if this is the midline and this is the fornix over here this should be the correct side of the bur hole from the midline the distance from the midline i mean if it is too lateral then it can injure the fornix uh, uh, in order to achieve the midline site of perforation you can injure the fornix over here so the 
choose uh, you have to choose uh, you to select the site of borehole very very carefully uh, depending on the procedure uh, now uh, suppose if you enter into the opposite side of fornix then injury to both fornix can happen in an attempt to do a midline perforation in an etp so uh, you have to be very very careful inserting into the lateral ventricle and to select the ipsilateral for um, uh, foramen monro to enter in order to avoid the damage to the fornix uh, in ETB, uh, uh, if there is bleeding, don't panic. I mean, uh, all sort of bleeding in endoscopy, unless until you have ruptured the basilar artery, all sort of bleeding and oozing, it stops with patients. With patients, when I say with patients, means that it actually stops uh, by means of irrigation. And second important tool which you have in your hand is the tamponade effect of the instrument. So you can inflate the balloon and uh, you, you can press it uh, on the uh, bleeding site and wait for some time, wait for some time. And do irrigation, do irrigation, wait for some time, and it stops actually. So do not panic when there is a bleeding there. Have some patience, wait for some time, do irrigation, and uh, it actually stops. Sometimes what happens in ETV, there is an opaque floor because of infection, especially in cases of tubercular meningitis. Uh, it is better, when you don't see anything, it is better and wise to be as anterior as possible because posteriorly will be the basilar artery in the perforator. So be as anterior as possible, uh, but posterior to the infundibular recess because uh, there are important structures uh, ahead of it. So uh, um, uh, the, uh, the site, when you don't see anything inside, uh, uh, it's better to be anterior rather than being posterior. Uh, this I have told, I mean, uh, they should consciously train themselves to remove the endoscope with the insertion of new instrument. And uh, injuries to the structures between the skin and the endoscopic tip, uh, they happen only when the instrument and the endoscope does not, uh, you know, uh, the endo instrument does not uh, go ahead of the endoscope. You should train your mind to use the instrument endoscope in this fashion. So, uh, bimanual approach. Yes, there are many. Um, there are many many surgeries where you can't use a bimanual approach. Uh, I mean, um, but in cases of transnasal endoscopy, it's always better that you use a binostral bimanual approach because you get more and more room to do the dissection. Uh, you can hold a suction in one hand, and you can use the. Uh, uh, you can ask your assistant to hold the telescope for you. Use a suction in the um, uh, bipolar in the other hand gives you optimal exposure, and uh, you can use drill or other instruments as and when required. So binostral approach is better. Control of bleeding is there. Tumor dissection you can do if you you, you are doing expanded approaches, removal of the tumor and all. It gives you more space. So uh, no doubt about it that the endoscopic techniques increasingly being used. Uh, they help in uh, reducing the morbidity, is to, although they have a steep learning curve. So uh, initially try to choose simple, simple cases, a small, small pituitary, and then join more and more of such workshops, cadaveric workshops, do a training on a papaya or a, uh, uh, things like that, uh, so as to obtain a, uh, uh, orientation in, you know, uh, you have to train your mind to a new set of learning like uh, train uh, how to work in a coordinated, synchronized manner with your hand in the brain and the eyes. Thorough understanding of the anatomy and the technique, the, all is required. Howsoever, there are some problems initially. You, initially, your cases might take longer to do. You, know, you have to uh, uh, keep on fiddling with the instruments. But yes, there is a learning curve to everything. And every